Okay. Nick and Carla back in the building. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Ladies, the originator. Now look, let me let me just take this back, man. You guys was the originators of of the community of the uh, L I'm I'm listen, I'm not even going to try and 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 say the letters because I don't want to disrespect the letters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you guys was a pillar of the community uh, in trucking. I mean, you guys was was featured in Rolling Stone at one point, right? Yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, Rolling Stone. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, wow. All right, so let's catch up, man. Let's catch up. Uh, Nick and Carla. All right. Nick. Uh, Nick and Carla. Uh, let's 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 hear let's let's hear a little bit of the bad story. Uh, you said a little bit of the back story. Uh, just a little bit of the bad story. I mean, if you okay, guys, um, because you know we had our first interview, and I could, you know, if you guys want to know more about Nick and Carla, you know, check out the first uh, uh, uh interview. But, you know, just a little bit of the bad story of, you know, how y'all got into trucking and to where okay. y'all at right now. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how to start this out. All right, so I was working, me and Carla, we met at Direct TV, which is a call center. And um, me, Nick, I was bored with the 9 to 5 life. I, was, I just felt like it was more out there. And eventually... I too, we some grown women, and we just like, dang, we finna drive these big ass trucks. Can I, can I cuss on here? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Can you I good. cuss? Yes, you can. We're like, dang, we finna, so we finna do our little bitty sales finna drive these big eighty thousand pound vehicles. And Carla was like, yeah, let's do it. So we went in there, and I was already vlogging because you know I gotta be creative in some type of way. I've already had like a little following. And trucking just really like helped with boosting the the, the following because I vlogged our um, life in trucking. You know, I just like to show people what it looked like to drive those big trucks while we were in that phase of our life. And we um, took another leap of faith in 2020 during the time I didn't even realize it was like called the Great Resignation. Like I didn't realize all millennials, a lot of millennials, were like quitting and taking leaps of faith and shit, but. Um, we quit our trucking job in 2020, and now we're full-time entrepreneurs. And we're, we've are we been doing it for two years, uh, full-time. All right, all right, all right. Nick and Carla. So while y'all uh, was in trucking, man, you know, like I said, you guys had some of the most awesomest uh, awesomest? Is that a word? I don't know if it is, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to use it. <laughs> but uh, you guys have some of the most awesomest vlogs. I mean, Nick, you're I always said that your editing was like was like the best out of the whole trucking spirit back in that time. Uh, where did you where where did you you know where where did you get that like where did you get your editing skills from and how did you manage the time to edit such uh such vlogs yeah it's like you gotta understand like creating is something that i'm very passionate about and i think people will make time for whatever they're passionate about and me i just love doing it so what i did at first i started off just doing everything on my cell phone and um all the skills that i picked up from like doing things on the laptop and you know just throughout my years i just put it all together and put it into uh editing the vlogs while i was trucking and it was really easy to come up with content because you know it's just a lot of drama and a lot of things that go on out there so i mean it was fun yeah <laughs> and then they have to you all have to realize because we were team driving yep that's what allowed nick to have time you know to do her editing or like if it was sometimes we were sitting still you know she would get a little bit more time to be as creative as she wanted to but People who drive solo, they still can have that same yeah. time in a sense. 
Yes, because but it's because I still missed out on a lot of sleep though. Sometimes, yeah. like if you're driving, it's already hard to drive while the truck moving. Yeah, and then you drive, and I, I got to drive, you know. But I j- it's because I'm passionate about it. People make time for what they're passionate about and what they really care about doing. Now, when you guys came into the industry, you, you both of you guys came into the industry through Prime. Uh, mm-hmm. Am I am I correct? Am I correct in saying that uh, Prime? Yeah. Oh, yes, okay. you are. Okay. Prime okay. Me. Okay, and majority of you guys' uh, journey and vlogs centered around Prime Inc., right? Well, as far as that first year of, of being at Prime, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, ex- exactly. And like I said, we, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to go back, you know, we, we don't have to go deep in in conversation about that because, you know, if you guys uh, check out our first uh, our very first interview with each other, you know, she goes into more detail. This is more, this is much of a, you know, a, a, a catch up session. So of course you guys, you know, tried your hands at, uh, CR, CRST. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> give, give a quick synopsis. Of CRST. Uh, well, CRST. So for what when we went there, we decided that we wanted to. Um, we had the opportunity to lease. So we was trying to just understand the business as much as we could because when we was at Prime, of course, they talked to us about getting a truck. But then when we heard about how high the notes can be, we was like, we we too new for that. We don't know if we want to do that yet. But we got the opportunity to try it when we was at CRST. Now, when we, you know, got the truck, it it wasn't all shit. Yeah, we got chip, you know. Um, <laughs> for the people that know the story, you know, it, it chip had a little accident or something. Yeah, it's like we named we named all we named all of our trucks, yeah. and uh, the one at CRST we named it Chip because it had like a little chip in the front. Yeah, it's like because we always try to make the best out of everything, every situation we're in. Yeah. But uh, as far as my thoughts on CRST, I mean, look, it's like. The reason we made the decision to go there is because we were interested in seeing what it was like to lease a truck, yeah. but not to be, um, what is it, headlock? Put in a headlock like Prime was doing. It's like with Prime, if you wanted to lease a truck, you had to pay like fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 a week. You know what I'm saying? Damn and it's it, like, man. we don't pay you. So CRST was like, you only got to pay, how much was it? Was it like 500 or something a week or something? It was really, really cheap. Oh, okay. You guys think if it's cheap, I mean, you're going to get cheap, you know, experiences, but it still allowed us to have a bit more freedom and to see what it was like to go the leasing route of and trucking. Yeah. And when Nick say a little bit more freedom, we had times where, um, you know, when we didn't have a trailer, we could really bobtail. bobtail. We could try to move around in the area that we was in, you know, and get into some different things. And we got into some shit. It was yeah. fun. It was, it was yeah. really fun. All right, ladies, let's take a pause right quick because I'm about to go through this tunnel and I know for a fact that I'm about to lose the signal. Five minutes later. All right. So uh, at one point, at, at one point, you guys... T- uh, um, put your hands on leasing because at one point y'all wanted to buy a truck, right? We were considering buying a truck. It's mm-hmm. like we were kind of like um, when we got out there into that world, what's the next level up type of thing? That's kind of the conversation we got caught in. Mm-hmm. And we were thinking, okay, maybe we want to buy a truck. Shoot, maybe even one day we can be fleet owners. But then the more and more we did it, the more and more we realized it kind of went against the theme or the what we the vision we have for our lives. Exactly. And that and and that's like it's like that's a common thing for everybody that's coming into the trucking industry. Like, yo, uh, I want to buy a truck. That's why I'm in the trucking industry. But you guys really use the trucking industry to your advantage to start your entrepreneurship uh yep. uh your entrepreneurship now right yes yes it helped a lot 
um, because, you know, social media is really a tool. It's a tool. It helps you get um, uh, build up a brand. It helps you with promotion, with marketing, everything. And, um, you know, some people may think that when they see people get on in front of the camera and make videos that they're just playing or it's just childish or something. But it's really the way of the world now. Like if you're trying to build a business, you need to have a strong social media presence. And, you know, the tr our trucking journey helped people become aware of who we were. And then we were able to branch out in different areas from there. Yeah. Now, now, of course, you ladies are are um, are married. Y'all y'all a married couple. Y'all. How long have it been? How long has it been now? Because I followed well, y'all journey when y'all got married, too. Uh, we've been together for a total of seven years. Uh it's about to be eight in October. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Uh, wait, I, I couldn't, I could wait, 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 wait. You sounded muffled in the background. Is that Carla talking? Yeah. Okay, Carla, I couldn't, uh -huh. I couldn't hear you for a second. Go ahead. Okay. So I was saying it's about to be eight years that mm -hmm. we've been in a relationship. And that is actually at the end of this month. Yeah. Now, as far as us being married, is it four years? Yeah, it's four years. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So, as as you said, Nick, about social media, and I I, I definitely agree with you because I I called you on the background uh, parts of it, and we we spoke on uh on which way social media. You know, we spoke on social media and everything. You guys. With you, you guys was unique with your social media. Number one, you're you're uh, you're a couple. You you are uh, you're a couple, and y'all was in trucking. I mean, y'all was putting it out there like, yeah, we're we're. Uh, can I say the word lesbian? Is that is is that okay? Yeah, it's not derogative. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay. Um. So you guys was a lesbian couple when y'all came into the industry showing that uh, coming into trucking, y'all was doing something at that time that wasn't even that wasn't even brought out to the forefront before you guys came. How, how do you feel about how, how you feel about uh, about being pillars? Because as I said before, you guys was featured in a lot of magazines. Y'all was featured in a lot of uh, y'all was featured on television. Hmm? We were on Huffington Post. Oh my God! D yeah. How 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 did it feel to 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 do that? Uh, I, I'm just to be honest. I mean, I'm just living my life, doing my thing, and uh, people who catch on to our journey and and we get to get a chance to witness it as we move. That that's cool, but I mean, I don't know. It does nothing really for my ego. It, I guess it gives a little bit of validation that. I'm in my element, I'm in my zone, I'm doing my thing. But I mean, I guess I just love the fact that we're able to live our lives and inspire other people to take it a step further or to just be brave to live their lives the way they live their lives as well. Yeah, I agree with what Nick said. I also think that I guess it helped people. You know how a lot of times we, our mind will keep us from doing things. Uh, when we were telling people that we was driving trucks, people were like, what, that big old truck? Like, I'll be scared. And sometimes those fears is what hold you back from doing things. So I think if anything, it helped other people to be, you know, to realize I can do this. Yeah. Like if I put my mind to something, because that's one thing that we will show people. Like, even if somebody tell you, you can't do it. Because when we left trucking, we was told we're going to come back. Even though we said, no, we're not. We're not coming back. Somebody said, what did they say? I'll buy your first meal when you come back to Prime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, even though other people try to put things on you, you have to know that you don't have to go that path and you should just push forward doing the things that you want to do. Don't let your mind play with you like that. Actually, that is a, a common thing that's happened with every move that we made. Because 
Just, you see, I don't, if you've been watching our journey, you see how we move. It's like you just never mm-hmm. know what the fuck is Don't know next. what, you, so, yeah, you don't know what's coming next for Nick and Carla. They just, when they do it, they do it. Yes, yeah. and it's the same. Our family, they already know that. They already up on game. So they, they already know how me and Carla move. But when we were at Prime and we went to CRST, they was like, oh, y'all will be back at Prime. When we left CRST and went to, um, with Highfield Trucking, shout out to them. They were like, oh, you'll be back with CRST. And when we left Highfield to be full-time entrepreneurs, like, oh, y'all be back. It's like people always do that. Yeah. But I think it's people pushing their insecurity yeah. off on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, your, your uh, YouTube channel still going strong, even that you're not even in the, in the trucking. How, how did your subscribers and your, and your followers, your, your uh, social media followers, gravitate to, you know, how you come, how you present yourself on YouTube now? Well, it's, it's kind of like uh, when I first, when I knew we were going into trucking, I knew that we were going to gain a lot of, uh, I knew it had potential to gain, gain a lot of subscribers from driving the trucks, but I made it a point not to make it completely focused like Nick and Carla trucking or uh, girls driving trucks. I knew not to do that because I already knew ahead of time that most likely we were not going to be doing trucking for a long time because I have a very um, detailed vision for our life. And um, it did, I knew it didn't involve having driving trucks. So that's why I presented the vlogs in a way I did, where it was telling stories and kind of allowing people to get to know us a little better. So when we quit trucking, eventually, the people who really rock with us, they still there. They're still like following our journey. They still curious. They still, you know, and the people who are only there for trucking, they kind of like, you know, faded away, but it's fine. So, it's it's, yeah. it's uh, your day ones is the ones that yeah. actually stayed with you, and you you built <laughs> your 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 channel to what it was. I mean, to what it to what it is now. I mean, when y'all first started, it was like a, a handful of subscribers. But when y'all got into doing your trucking journey and started doing the storytelling and the way you was editing and the way the stories was being presented on YouTube, and it just blew up. Like, yeah, I'm. A- you uh when before we when i before i came into trucking the subscribers we had was 114 subscribers and like as far as views oh man i could barely even get people to watch my videos it was just like 20 views here 30 there or whatever but then when we got in trucking it blew the channel up to like 20 something thousand and then now on that channel, we're at 37,000. We have a second channel that's just hit 30,000. And then um, we're working on a third channel, too. Wow. So now the first yeah. now the second channel, the the, the I'm, I'm going to call it the spicy channel. Still <laughs> popping. <laughs> it's still popping. You say 30,000. Congratulations, man. Yeah, but see, the thing is, it's like. That's why you have to kind of plan ahead. You got to see things before it actually happened in real life. So before we left trucking, we started that second channel. I knew we were going to need that channel because I knew when we left trucking, there were going to be some people who were upset. There were going to be some people unsubscribed and there were going to be. So what we did was we used that second channel. And the, the people who were regaining there who never heard about us, they only knew me and Carla for like our lesbian relationship. Yeah. They are the ones who helped carry that blogging channel. And that's why now things are like starting to grow. And stuff. All right. So since yeah. you so since you kind of like migrated everything from from, you know, trucking, you kind of migrated the main channel into like a reaction channel. Right. No, the, uh, the blog channel is oh. still a blog channel it's about me and Carla's life. Okay. And then the second channel is the reaction channel. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So the reaction, so on the reaction channel, you guys react to a whole bunch of crazy videos, internet videos, something what I tried, you know, well, I'm do, still doing it. But, you know, as you told me in the, you know, behind the scenes, you know, I had to stay focused on a certain niche and everything. And I'm still, do, I'm still doing that. So I'm kind of like breaking the channel into parts. And all like that. 
because the followers that I got, I got one set of followers for trucking. I got one set of followers for the reactions and one set of followers for the conversations that I have with the, you know, that I have with, you know, different people. And that seemed to work out better for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I I guess you could say I found my niche, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's not about me. So <laughs> so you guys now um what what are you guys doing now? Like what's what's up with Nick and Carla now? Um we're living life for a living. And I'm going to tell you why I answered the question in that way. That's so, always um, that, and that's always been your motto. That that right there, yeah. that's been your motto but for I'm years. Gonna you, I'm gonna tell you why I started it that way. Um, so let's see here. It's about seven years ago, I met this guy. His name is Genesis. And when uh, this is when I was, this is before trucking. This is when I was still miserable at my nine to five job, you know, but still trying to get into making music and just being a creative full time. All that. Um, my friend introduced me to this man. His name was Genesis. We went into this big building. He had on these little cute little socks and he was just had on his clothes. He was just walking around in his socks and he was in this big, important building. And we would sit there and listen to him talk. He just seemed so free. And I was just so curious. I saw, I asked, I said, Genesis, what do you do for a little, like, what is it that you do to make your money? Like, I'm trying to understand, like, I'm listening to you talk, but I don't hear a job that you do. And he said, I live life for a living. And so pretty much he has his hands in so many different things. He has so many different streams of income, so many ways of making money where he's just free. So he just managed his wealth. And pretty much that's what me and Carla are doing. And we're adding more and more as far as different sources of it. We're entrepreneurs. We live life. We manage different in sources of income. We uh, we explore. We uh, travel. We have a trip coming up uh, soon where we're going to leave the country. It's like we just live life for a living. That's I don't know how else to do it. And it's like I, I like it that way. Like I, I like people to be curious. Like, OK, I understand you saying live life for a living. But how are you making your money? Just know that we're free. And exactly. We're and people don't need to know that anyway. You know, and that's no, like, oh. still curious. It makes sense. You know, because it's like I would be curious because I want to experience that too. But it's like even though I never knew exactly what Genesis did, what he represented, that is what I have been chasing since for seven years, and which is why I'm here. Talking about it, but I want to get your I, I want to get your thoughts on it. Is there work in TikTok? Like we work on YouTube, you know, with lighting, editing, giving a good presentation, audio. Is there work in TikTok in a three minute video? Yes, actually, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it really, well, okay, it depends also what type of TikToks you're uploading. So if you're mm -hmm. talking about like these little kids where these people have to get up, they got to really go into their brains and create what type of TikToks is she doing? I get, um, uh, I get, I, I guess talking head TikToks because that that's what I got out of it. Because for me, a talking head TikTok for three minutes is not work. <laughs> you said a talking, you what, said a talking head. Yeah. A talking, a talking head is like you on the video talking. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's like I can see why you would think it's not work, especially if you do like these longer videos on YouTube. But mm -hmm. I do see TikTok as work because there, this is kind of the reason why I haven't really like just went all out with TikTok because I was like, I'm so caught up with YouTube and stuff. And when I think about trying to make TikToks, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it that can part, work, but it also can be work too. It can, it's like I, I do TikTok, easy TikToks to try to help with just boosting that little following up over there. But it can be work depending on which, what type of TikToks you're doing. Yeah, because I think for some people, and I'm not talking about just the dancing TikToks. Mm. They'll work too, though. Cause, yeah. No, wait. I'm just okay. No way. You think no. that? No. Uh-uh. You talk about trend. You, you, you talk about this. The, what, what's the new trend now? The, the shake, uh, R. Kelly shake. 
twin. Well, that's I, I, work. Forever to learn that damn dance. I, that is work. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm gonna have. Where's 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 where, what, what, what button I need for this one right here? Uh, what? The, uh, hold on. Yeah, there you go. That one. Hold on. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, no, no. You find you find one of them TikTok dances and pull it off. I'm not. I, 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 no, I'm not doing. I, I don't do TikTok dances. <laughs> if you notice on my TikToks, all I do is all I do is reactions to re uh random videos. I'm not a fan of TikTok. I'm not. That is not. That's not really a lot of work right there. Like if exactly. I'm just sitting there, you know, but everybody not doing that though. Yeah. It's like some people are still trying to be creative because they're using TikTok as a way to, um, you know, show themselves to people. But then not only that, they may have another platform that they're filtering those people to. Yeah. It's the same way we know this girl. She started off on TikTok actually doing dances. But now she got a YouTube and some of her followers came over there because they're more interested about her life. So it just depends. Some of those people, they still have to be creative. I get what you're saying. Some of them, it's like it don't take that much energy. But the ones who actually care and they're taking the time, you still have people that use a ring light. They still come on there. They think about what it is that they're going to do and make sure that they have a good message to put out. Mm. That don't just come easy. Like every time you do one of these interviews, it don't just come easy. You have to have a format to what you're going to do. Uh, some people do have a format to the madness. Yeah. And, I uh, but when it comes to TikTok, it's like I really I think TikTok is a dope platform. I think it's a good way to grow. Like if you can go ahead and put that energy into it. But it's, it's, I think. But I don't think that your followers are as strong as far as like how much they will. Hmm, they're not as um, loyal mm-hmm. as uh, YouTube. Like as, if you grow like if you grow twenty thousand subscribers on YouTube versus uh, twenty thousand on TikTok, your followers on uh, YouTube. YouTube is way strong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I I agree wholeheartedly with that one. Let me ask you this right yeah. quick before we get out of here because I know you some busy ladies and thank you very much for giving me the giving me the time. What what how, what do you, uh, do you still follow some truckers uh on on YouTube because majority of the truckers has migrated over to TikTok and pretty much and I'm talking about for the ladies, a couple of guys too, but they 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 found more of a success following on TikTok, and then that's that brings it back to me saying that it's much more easier to number one gain followers, and number two you yeah. don't have to put that much work into uh into making a video on TikTok as a trucker. As if yeah. you was on YouTube, because there was plenty of people that had some good channels, but now they don't they they don't focus on YouTube no more. They they all focus yeah. on TikTok. Is, oh, okay. So the first question is, do we still follow truckers? Um, no. Like we, it's like okay. It's, I think the ones that we follow, we still follow them. Just but, to check in, but we don't yeah. like sit and watch their content because I mean I don't want, I don't care about sitting and watching truck shit no more. Yeah. I ain't in the world no more. But um, we do like to you know check out everybody's journey, see how they're doing. Every you know some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, like keeping it one hundred. Like I'll check in on her every now and then. Shout out to her. She's um, a, she's about- no she's she's one of the ones that migrated it over to uh over to TikTok I think, now. I think keeping it did did it smart though. It's because she still do her. I don't know if she still do her YouTube. I think she do still do her YouTube. Not as like, much. Not not as much not as she do TikTok. Yeah. And see, and this is the thing too. Um. I want to call you lockout, but yeah, what, go what ahead. Should I, what should Lock, I, lockout. Okay, lockout. Yeah. This is the thing. I think um, you really. That's why I say it's important to have like a detailed vision for your life, and mm-hmm. that's and that's a new thing. So you know exactly how to move, mm-hmm. which is the detailed vision. That the main thing that me and Carla want is freedom, and we know money to take money to get freedom. 
but it's kind of like, okay, with TikTok, what do I want from TikTok? What am I mm. ultimately going to do? Do I just want the fame? Do I just want mm. like a lot of followers? What what can I really do with that? Or do I want to build a brand and a, like a really strong fan base that's going to rock with me, you know, through thick and thin and, and be able to monetize it that way? You can I, I get think, you can get like, that from so, YouTube. I think it's more I think YouTube subscribers are more valuable. Um, not just subscribers, though, uh, YouTube subscribers and YouTube like viewers. viewers and yes. That is way more valuable than TikTok, which is why I don't put as much energy into TikTok. But you're right. It is easy to make some TikTok videos. I'll be making them real quick, you know, to get some <laughs> followers up. But um, but I don't focus that much on there because I know the main money, the main, you know, it's, it's on YouTube, in my opinion. Exactly. Exactly. All right, ladies, ladies, I seen um, I, I, I seen your promotion for an adult uh for an adult product man what's up with that yes that's actually uh one Wait of a minute lock out you got a little lady that need a little toy or something <laughs> you know i know y'all over there in the trucking industry i mean <laughs> I, I, I mean you know i i'm over here looking at that i i see it i i you know of course it came up on my on my feed like yo nick and carla got this new got this new <laughs> See, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. We promoting adult toys now. What's up? How did well, you? This is, and this, how did you guys get uh, hooked up with that? So this is what I mean as far as using social media as like a tool, and you branch out into other areas. So we have one of our e-commerce stores is um we it's called freaksaudiobooks.com. Mm. That's uh where say, you say, go. And, say, you know, say it again. Say it, say it again uh, so the people in the back can hear. All the freaks. It's, uh, <laughs> it's freaksaudiobooks.com. All right, now. And um, the main product is um, I, I create or we create um, audiobooks. And these audiobooks are short, eccentric stories. And it has sound effects, music, voice acting, background ambience to fully immerse the listener into the, the, uh, the world of the book. But alongside that, we also sell what I call what we call luxury adult products. So mm. they are it's, they sex toys, but they are on the higher end. And it's right now we're mainly focused on women. So, yeah. OK, no, that's fine. That's that's fine. You can be focused on women. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm sure eventually we'll add some toys for men. But I don't I, it's like I know exactly what women, what we like, what would be good toys for us. I don't know what y'all need rings around y'all. <laughs> so I don't know what y'all get into. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure either what, what what these guys is into. So I, you know, yeah, we we gonna leave that one alone right there. All right, Nick and Carla, man, thank you very much, ladies. I, it's it's always a pleasure and a joy uh, talking with you guys, catching up with you guys. And Nick, like I said, I you know I I, I call you on the back end, regardless on on anything social media. So. Thank you very much for always, uh, for always, you know, being in the network for me. Most definitely, most definitely. Thank you for reaching out. Let me see. I'm trying to check out your channel, see what you've been doing on your channel. Yeah, I definitely understand. It's kind of like with me and Carla, like we have a reaction channel, and I know some people because we've done the reaction channel for two years and we blew it up to thirty thousand. And some people are probably wondering, like, damn, how they blow that channel up? It's because because you'll see other reaction channels on YouTube where it's kind of like it's stagnant. It's not really moving. And that's because they be all over the place. But me and Carla, when we started our reactions, we did lesbian couples right. and like around lesbian or LGBT. And we yep. stayed in that corner pocket and we, excuse my language, fuck the shit out of it. Exactly. So that's kind of like, that's what you got to do. So if trucking is your thing is like, that's what the people don't want to see from. Even if you do truck and drama, they still want to see it about you. About we got the best conversations <laughs> over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If you guys want to get in and get on, y'all know what to do. 216 That's what we do over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. We talk to 
everybody. Interesting people such as my girl, my girls, Nick and Carla. You guys want to check out their journey? Go to their YouTube page, which is Nick and Carla on YouTube. And what's the other one? Nick, Nick and it's it's the same. Nick Rochelle, Nick. If you if they just visit nickandcarla.com or just search or Google Nick and Carla, all of our stuff will pop up. Yeah. Okay. We do a lot of stuff. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. Go just Google Nick and Carla. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Guys, we'll talk to you guys later. Big cheese got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a